Hi all, my name is Nish, uh, Director of Professor Visa and Education Services on also Registered Migration Agent from um, Australia. Mara number 1568498. Um, now today I'm going to talk about some, uh, you know, very interesting topic that, uh, you know, a lot of uh, migration agents or uh, people are potentially not aware about it and uh, it's very important because it is uh, an emerging issue in a growing community, uh, especially people are, uh, who are not familiar with certain uh, medical conditions in this country will be acknowledged in a different ways. Now, as you know, majority of the temporary visa or a permanent residency visa would require a person to satisfy a public interest criteria that, that is relating to your health uh, situation. Therefore, you will go and conduct a medical checkup for your uh, visa purpose, um, especially if it's a temporary visa, you'll do your chest x-ray and a normal uh, general checkup. And if it's your permanent residency or if you're a health allied workers working in hospitals, you have to do a hepatitis B and also HIV test. Now, the problem, uh, the emerging problem is with the young families where they have recently conceived a baby or they have delivered the baby uh, the baby is born and uh, there has been some uh, development delays on the babies now wh what tends to happen I'll tell you a background of uh, you know a usual scenario uh, where, where people will fail uh, to meet this public interest criteria and and it's very important for any uh, parents now today's topic uh, is mainly concerned about uh, a child uh, with some sort of uh, delays on the development or also some sort of um, uh, a down syndrome I would say uh, how to deal with the situation and and, uh, and it is very uh, you know very uh, unfortunate situation for a lot of uh, couple who has worked very hard for the permanent residency potentially moving to regional areas or they have uh, you know work very hard in order to apply for PR. Now, when they apply for permanent residency or tem even temporary visa in some of the cases, uh, obviously they will go through the medical checkup for you know the entire family members. Uh, because if the child is more than six months, uh, the child has to also go through the medical checkup. Um, and uh, the, the medical officers, uh, what we call is MOC, uh, will assess the health uh, and then make a decision based upon the health criteria. Uh, what tends to happen is, uh, especially on kids' situation, uh, normally the, the couple, the parents are very busy in Australia, they have their own uh, full-time work, they'll have a, a baby and the next thing is once, uh, you know, the mother is recovered from the pregnancy uh, or the labour, then obviously, you know, the, the next uh, destination for the child is to go to the childcare. Now, what happens uh, with the multilingual uh, child, you know, or, or a child who hasn't been uh, supported very well at home uh, would go uh, in, in some sort of a delay in, in talking or, you know, there's some speech delays, uh, there's some, uh, you know, activities delays and so on. So when this kind of delay is where, you know, the ch uh, kids are sort of, uh, you know, uh, diagnosed at, uh, you know, childcare centers, what they normally do is they would... Uh, then talk to their parents uh, to take the kids to the pediatricians and uh, have that normal routine checkup. So when this uh, recommendation is made by a childcare, uh, how the pediatrician usually, uh, you know, assess the situation is uh, they will they will put the child into some sort of uh, categories of uh, you know development delays. Uh, that could be essentially a uh, autism spectrum. Uh, and, and various, uh, you know, uh, obviously the, the doctor, the pediatrician will then make a recommendation to go and do a further checkup to to see if there is any uh, genetics uh, disorder or you know, uh, you know, where where in the autism spectrum does the child falls under. Now, if the child is, uh, you know, on the spectrum of one, two, three, uh, it's normally it's okay because, uh, you know when we go and assess the situation we can uh, potentially uh, look for a waiver but what happens in a normal situation is um, you know the development delays are usually also triggered by some other down syndromes 
uh, such as trisomy or uh, you know there's the list goes on in terms of disorders so um, and, and this is this is a, a big deal when it comes to a, a visa uh, assessment because if the person the, the medical criteria is if one applicant fails the medical criteria then the whole the entire application fails so not just uh, that party will be refused on the visa application who has some uh, diagnosed with some sort of medical condition but the entire visa application will be refused so hence that needs to be dealt uh, properly so uh, my recommendation to every parents is the fact that if you have been recommended by the child care about the uh, certain concerns on the child development I would suggest if you are not a permanent residency to come and see uh, migration agents or the immigration lawyer first because it has a whole heap of visa complication associated with those kind of delays because what tends to happen is when the medical officers go and assess the situation and if the situation is assessed in a such a way that it uh, is deemed that this particular disability or this uh, particular uh, disease will uh, impact or put an undue pressure on Australia and Australian health system then um, then there is a threshold. Obviously, they'll work out the cost uh, in in normal scenario. They'll look in the temporary visa scenario. They'll look at the how much of the cost that Australians are looking at incurring uh, for the duration of the visa and for the permanent residency. Uh, there are different way, different um, uh, you know the assessment test is in place. For example, uh, you know hepatitis B. They'll look into um, they'll look into the average uh, lifespan of the person and then they'll work out the cost associated with it multiplied by the average lifespan of the person and that's how the the cost comes out into play now the threshold is forty nine thousand dollars which has increased uh, from forty thousand i guess the last one was but uh but it's very easy to cross that forty nine thousand dollar mark especially you know there's a there's a lot uh, goes into uh, you know providing that sort of rehabilitation uh, facilities for the uh, the, the you know the party who's suffering from these medical conditions, uh, providing that uh, you know support. Uh, just to take the example of uh, the child with the delays, uh, you know th there's a significant cost involved on providing the occupational therapy. There's a significant cost involved in uh, providing a, a speech therapist. There's a significant cost involved in uh, pediatricians and uh, you know special uh, schools and all that kind of stuff so this is all factor in uh, however if you are keen on uh, knowing more on this uh, topic uh, I can share the uh, national uh, there's a there's a note for guidance for disability service deals with the financial implication and consideration of uh, pre prejudice uh, to access uh, to service associated with the disability service uh, which was published in October 2021 the table actually uh, talks about when the, the child with some sort of disability or some sort of uh, delays goes to a uh, school uh, what sort of level of support they would need uh, this is well explained in uh, page 38 I think from memory uh, which talks about the you know the scale of the cost uh, associated with the you know the disability and what sort of service or what sort of uh, help that the government needs to provide uh, for a particular scenario so long story uh, short, uh, what happens is if the, the medical officer assessed this application and has assessed that the undue cost of this particular uh, you know, uh, medical impacted person uh, will increase the threshold mark, then there might be a public interest criteria 4005 imposed. 4005 is particularly challenging because it has no waiver. So we cannot request for the waiver in this situation and the case becomes uh, very complicated uh, so we do can we, we can't go and appeal the case at the tribunal however usually these are the cases needs to be dealt differently for such as you know going through ministry intervention or looking for some other visa options however uh, there's a public interest criteria 4007 which we can ask for a waiver uh, and how we, we would normally deal in this kind of scenario is this is where we need to calculate the cost associated uh, in terms of looking after this uh, particular person impacted by the, the, the health situation uh, then we need to look into what sort of arrangements we have done what sort of uh, financial capacity that per, uh, you know the applicant has uh, or the guardian has 
uh, you know, what sort of uh, reciprocal health arrangement has been made uh, back home or here. Family members who's going to uh, support and care for this person, the service required, what sort of services required, and so on. So this is uh, this is a very interesting topic, uh, especially uh, for those ones who are not familiar with this kind of implication on the visa. Uh, they need to be well aware about this uh, before they go see a um, pediatrician because once the doctor is visited and once the pediatrician start putting a notes on the uh, system, what tends to happen is uh, they would also put a reference to the NDIS funding which also uh, you know, flag the medical officers at Department of Home Affairs which uh, is the whole reason why you know, the, the Bhopal medical officer will be uh, doing this assessment because they've already got some pre-recorded history in the system. So, look, I would suggest um, to come and see us uh, if you have some sort of difficulties with the medical situation, especially with the kids. Um, this is the emerging uh, sort of issue at the moment and uh, it's getting quite popular because the, the parents are not well aware about this situation uh, and or, or it's not openly talked about in the in the community and because of the fact that, you know, parents are just a little bit hesitant to talk about uh, the medical situation of the kids amongst the people. Uh, however, these are the topics that needs to be uh, well addressed uh, for both for kids uh, uh, future and also your visa uh, side is, is more important for this topic today. Now, I've, I've put some of the, the items where for public interest criteria 4005, we cannot uh, request for waiver for certain uh, reasoning as below. We cannot. We cannot choose not to use an available services. Costs will be met through the variety of alternative means such as savings, reciprocal health healthcare arrangements, or having a comprehensive health insurance, bringing on a supply of medication or traveling with the care carer. Someone else will cover the cost, for example, foreign government. Family members will be caring for them or providing service. A service required are not available in a particular location in Australia. These are not the reason we can use in public interest criteria 4005. So 4005 is particularly uh, the hard ones to deal with because that this is the uh, their area uh, essentially the government uh, officer has deemed uh, a significant cost will be uh, incurred uh, into Australian health system and also the Australian government. So um, it, it's it's sad and it, it it's it's very challenging situation. Whenever like you know we we have seen like you know the parents working very hard for the permanent residency, and uh, been uh, you know imposed public interest criteria four zero zero five only to find out the visas refused under the health ground. Uh, you know and, and some of these things could potentially be mitigated uh, quite early, early in the game if the parents were aware about this kind of situation, uh, which may impact on the visa application in future. However, having said that, um, you know, we need to provide that uh, essential need for the child. I mean, because the topic is more about the child. The, look, the public interest criteria around the health needs to be satisfied by anyone, any applicants uh, in the visa application anyway. Uh, and, and this could essentially mean people suffering from HIV or um, hepatitis B and so on. But, but today's topic is more about the child because what tends to happen is even if the child is sort of diagnosed with some sort of autism spectrum or some sort of uh, development delays, what tends to happen with the visa application is the case officer might want to absorb the child for another three, four years to see how the child gonna progress. So there will be a significant delays associated with that anyway. So you will be impacted one way or the other. So it's very important that we seek a, a proper guidance well in advance. So if you have been recommended by uh, your childcare or uh, your general practitioner to go and see a pediatrician for your child. I would like to see you guys first before um, you guys go and see the pediatrician for further help for your child. So uh, yeah, to, I think uh, I didn't want to bring up a lot of legislative criteria in the video because I wanted to make sure that you know the video is made in such a way that the common people can understand what's going on. So that this is my little attempt to make sure that this critical element is not overlooked by the parents. This critical element is very, very important to sort of start thinking about well in advance. As soon as you find out something about uh, something wrong about the child, it's very important that you not only look at the, the development uh, progress or, or what sort of support you can provide to the child, you should also think about your visa aspect of the, the thing as well. So it's very important that you come and have a chat with us. So on that note, I would like to conclude the today's video. This uh, will be available through our podcast and also through uh, our YouTube channel. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe both the podcast and uh, YouTube channel uh, to get more information on uh, Australian migration and education uh, news update. 
Again, my name is Nish from Professional Visa and Education Services. Uh, we are located at 83 York Street um, in Sydney. We are also in Hobart and in Canberra. Our uh, office is, um, sorry, our website is www.provisa.com.au. Um, uh, you can contact us or you can uh, go to our website to make an online booking. Uh, we are more than happy to service you with 30 minutes free face-to-face uh, -face consultation or paid phone consultation. All right. Well, up until the next episode, I will see you soon. And thanks for listening and thanks for watching. All right. Bye-bye.